scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Many of us think the secret to change is to acquire physical things. It's only a secret to frustration. Everything is connected to something in the realm of the spirit. And if it is not in your mind, I promise you that it will leave you. Please hear me. I know why growth may not be happening to you. I know why growth may not be happening to you. The reason is because our society cannot see into the realm of the spirit. So they deceptfully look at your persona. And while it is true that eventually it should reflect what is in your mind, but it doesn't start from the beginning. So the embarrassment, nobody wants to look like a failure. So we quickly go to outsource things that tries to coin a picture of what is not there. And we continue to multiply pain. There is nobility in growth. That you pay the price. Go back and open that notebook that you stopped writing on since five years ago because he said, Lord, I can't continue to mock myself like this. While he's looking from heaven, did you not know that Satan is only coming to you because he's seen something being built? The thief cometh not. That means he has no business coming except he sees what is stealable, killable. The thief cometh not. The reason why the devil doesn't bother certain people is not because they love God. It's because he doesn't see anything that is worth his presence. I hope you know that Satan is not, he's not omnipresent. To get his attention, you must do something striking. So he lets you alone while he goes to disrupt someone. I've looked at this family. I never saw this construction. Where is this coming from? The grandfather could not have it. The grandmother could not have it. But what I see being built in the realm of the spirit is a life and a destiny full of color. Who is this? And he comes to find out. And then he lies to you. And so the Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen. But we look at the things unseen. Look at the things unseen. Because they can be seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. Ah, rejoice not over me, oh. Rejoice not over me. Don't, don't rejoice that nobody has a job in our family, no problem. Don't rejoice that it's joblessness that is making you a faithful worker in church. You are such a jobless young man. You are moving around, you would have been married now, but look at this, this ushering thing is killing your destiny and you feel stupid for being an usher. Keep watching. When God is done with you, eh? he will not only lift you, he will restore you. You see that? Bring you to a position as though nothing, no lag ever happened in your life. Your enemy opens the office and there you are seated. Even praying in tongues. He says it's a joke. He says it's not a joke. God is a lifter. And he has brought me here. Please, I want you to guard your mind jealously. No matter what happens to you. We build garages for our cars. We build 
stores and wardrobes for our clothes but we don't build a protection for our minds a car will come and go your clothes will come and go preserve your mind for out of it comes the issues of life are we together can I steal a few minutes to share one more key oh dear I wish I had time <laughs> this is a Sunday service don't forget I hope you didn't leave food on fire <laughs> amen praise the Lord my life changed as I have opened myself to be mentored by profoundly great people I have found out that this is a common string something happened to their minds and it changed their lives that their lives eventually became an expression of the dexterity of their minds hallelujah law number two can you pray in tongues while I turn there Remember, this is a conference. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. The second key to growth, the second key to lifting, is understanding men. The law of men <laughs> that man as an entity has to be studied for you to succeed it is not enough to know God in as much as I've shared with you about the power of the mind the psalmist said something very interesting he said when I consider the works of your hands, the lilies and all of that, then he said, what is man? That thou art mindful, concerned of, nor the son of man, he says, that thou visitest him. Do you know what brought the psalmist to this realization? When you study all through scripture, you see the unashamedness in God's seeking man. Not just man seeking God for a while he would abandon man and say you are not serious I leave you to your enemies and then on his own like a man in love and says I'm not doing again and after two days he just asks and says are you there? fine it's not are you there he's saying look I, I don't know the name of what is happening to me but are you still God is not ashamed to present his vulnerability before men that while the worship in heaven is going on suddenly he becomes distracted and he looks at man and he still comes to man. He will raise a prophet to say, oh yeah, man, it's okay. Just come to me. And man will casually, arrogantly come back to God and God will receive him seriously. And so the psalmist was bothered. God, did you lose your intelligence? Can't you wipe man and start another humanoid species? What is a man that you must fix no matter how damaged? What is man? What did you put in man that we are not aware of? To the point that you come to visit him. You died for him. Won the victory. Sat on the throne and you are still interceding. Abba. You gave him the Holy Spirit on earth. And then you are there at the right hand of the father. And you are still not quiet. You are interceding. And you are still about your Melchizedek priesthood. What is man? If God is asking that question, you should ask God. What is man that I have refused to rise? What is man that I must depend on to rise? This is the world of men. And not knowing this will cost you anything good. Praise the Lord. Pastor, every time God wants to help Israel, he will send Jacob. He sends a word to Jacob for the sake of Israel. Every time God wants to help a man, he sends a man. 
You've heard me say it for some of you and I will repeat it again that all blessings come from God through men to men. Nothing comes from God to men. It looks like it comes from God to men. But the truth is that everything comes from God through men to men. That means if God agrees and a man refuses, the answer in your destiny is no. Hmm. We are teaching. That's why I'm... God says yes. A man says no. In a strange way, your answer will be no. Abraham is in a vision with God and he sees that the captivity will last only 400 years, correct? And then the difficulty in preparing Moses adds 30 extra years to their captivity and God had to make do with that script because it took that long for Moses to be ready. Are we together? Another instance, David is in the wilderness having visions of the throne as a little shepherd boy, seeing that he would become a king. Saul offends God and God rejects him. Yet God cannot anoint David because a man in between David and Saul refused to agree. It's in your Bible. So God comes down to Samuel and says, Samuel, please, how long will you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul, you are delaying someone else's destiny. I intend to have started, but because you are a man and you refused, my own plans is delayed. Take on your horn, go to the house of Jesse. Couldn't he bypass him? Please understand this. We have taught for many years that you don't need a man to rise. If you are saying that to express God's sovereignty and might, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that God can do without men, he has chosen to incorporate men. And believe me, if you ignore men, you will pay for it. This is the world of men. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. There are men who you cannot cast. God will only make them like you for you to pass that gate. Not everybody can be casted and can be bound. There are men who are gatekeepers. They are the kinds that the Bible says when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes them to be at peace with you. Otherwise, you will not pass. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Listen, listen, listen. Please settle down. Listen. This is, make sure you are not just excited. You are getting what I'm telling you. Because this is very powerful. Very powerful. Great business people. Great preachers. Great intellectuals. But they ignored men. And they are paying for it today. This is a world of men. Please hear me. This is a world of men. Believers, let's wake up. This is a world of men. Those who know this rise as if Satan does not exist. Those who have ignored men. When Jesus meets with Saul, pastor, who would later become Paul, even an encounter with Jesus did not stop him from meeting men. Jesus referred him back to men for the continuity of his lifting. Go to the house of Judah, although you've met me, still go there. A man will come. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who was a, the word, Walked under a close heaven for 30 years till he met a man. The word, your word, who became flesh, the logos of the father. Walked under a close heaven until he met a man called John the Baptist. And John wondered, ah, Jesus, ah, he said, so far it to be so. It's an ordinance. If you ignore me, my heavens will close. Abraham was a man who continued to wallow in confusion until he met a strange being called Melchizedek, the king of an ancient city of Salem. And he gave him a tithe of all and Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. 
to the point that Jesus had to become a man to help men. He did not help men as God. Today he's on the throne as a man. He didn't change back. The man, Jesus, is still on the throne. This is the world of men. If you ignore men, God didn't ignore men. You shouldn't. It's lack of wisdom to ignore men. Men are gatekeepers of the anointing. Men are gatekeepers of influence. Men are gatekeepers of endorsements. There are times you do not have access to the gate. You will need a man who is already at the gate to speak for you. The territory has been designed to listen to his voice. And the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God, the king. A man can send for another man and bring him out of a dungeon. It comes from God through men to men. Are we together? There are things in the Bible that did not happen because God said it should happen. It happened because men decided to make it happen. And God honored it in a very strange way. Relationships are very powerful. They are called advantageous connections. Everything grows and multiplies on the basis of relationship. Please listen. That advantageous connection in your life, when God wants to lift you, he will send a man. The credibility of men matter to our growth. The endorsement of men, it matters what they say about you. Don't ignore men and say it doesn't matter. No. They limited the Holy One. Jesus only arrived because Anna the prophetess, a man, was praying his coming. He didn't just arrive because he left heaven and arrived. No, 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 no. A woman was praying for his arrival. Simeon the prophet, praying for his arrival. The body of Jesus is hanging on that cross and no angel could bring it down except a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. He went to another man and requested the body of God to come down. Who have you ignored? Who came to you as an answer to a prayer and you ignored? God sent a man as an answer to your prayer. And he said, what is there? I can't, what, what is there with, must he be the one to pray for me? This was the mistake. The simple mistake of Saul was ignoring men. That was it. Saul did not offend anybody. He did not wait for the man ordained by God to offer sacrifices. He did it himself. And Samuel came and said, you have done foolishly. Men are not just men. Even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. Please listen to me. Many of us have ignored men. There is a law that your lifting is men dependent. God is limited when men do not give him space. I wish what I were saying were not true, but it is true. You are being blessed in this conference now, not because God chose today. No. The day men are available becomes your today. If the pastor, if your pastor shifted this conference, the will of God must shift too for you. Because a man, is, is it not a... <laughs> Now watch this. We are going to pray shortly. He was going to share the testimony. Many of you were blessed by Victoria's ministration, powerful ministration, and all the ministrations and all the preachers and everybody because a man agreed with God and chose the date for your deliverance. Can you imagine that? It was not God that chose the date. A man sat down and said, I agree, Lord, come within this period and lift your people. And God honored it. Please listen. It is very powerful. You ignore men, you will pay the price. It's true. The ark was supposed to be carried by men. They invented a cart. And then, when the cart was about to fall, an innocent man came to hold it and died, and the cart didn't fall. Listen to me. Men are true gifts from God. 
The moment you begin to pray, don't wait for a lot. Look out for men. When you see a man come and start rejoicing, because God is sending breakthrough. I preached a message years ago called the gift of men. The true proof of favor is not money. The true proof of favor is the hearts of men. When God gives you the hearts of men, you are really favored. Because when you have the heart of a man, you have everything. My son, give me your heart. A man can give you his hand and his resources and you would and not love you. Please, if you're in ministry here, listen. This is a grace you must need. If you want church to grow, you will need men that agree with you and can take that risk to hold your hands and build with you. It is in the multitude of men that a king's honor lies, not estate, men. In ancient times, any king who had men was feared. So they would conquer people and carry their men, not necessarily their land, their men. For God so loved men, he came and died to redeem men. Your job is not in heaven. Your job today as we talk is in this city, in the hand of a man. Consider his appointment and your prayer is answered. And you think, and you think that is not an issue? Contracts of millions are hanging, not in the realm of the spirit. Being suspended by the wheels of men. Listen, a man is so important that when God wants to rescue his people, he looks for a man of influence. And the only available man who could hear him was Joseph. But Joseph was in a prison. Having a dream will not help him. So God has to use an unbeliever called Pharaoh to have a dream that is prophetic. And then they now call another man to interpret it. The same way Nebuchadnezzar, the same way Darius, look at the men God had to make do with. If you get what I'm telling you today, you can sit down and pray and say, Lord, who have you anointed to lift me? Who has my eyes refused to see? Who is responsible for my lifting? It can be after this service. You will quickly, quickly buy plantain and run to that man and say, I just came to greet you. He said, oh, I'm busy. He said, no problem. You are not being foolish. You are connecting to men for your lifting. Men are very powerful. My life today has not just been glorified at the mercy of God alone, but also at the mercy of men. It's the reason why men are a big deal to me. I don't ignore men. I don't dishonor men. Many of us do so to our peril. Our sincere loved ones do so. You see a music artist and say, what is there? Is it not just God that is the giver of all? That statement alone, you will pay for it. Because every time you despise a man, you despise what he or she carries. Honor is the key to access. Everybody and everything you dishonor, you authorize that that grace should run away from you. So you can listen to pastor's message in the secret and despise him in the open. The anointing will never bless you, even if you fall down. I tell you why it's hard for people to rise. These are the systems of the kingdom. The God of systems. The lifter of men. Someone can come to another man and say, I have discerned that there is so much grace on your life. You came into Lagos and in two years, in two years you have five houses in two years all your children have gone to school there must be something in you man can I talk about the anointing and then we'll pray because this anointing thing I want to talk about now is the last law the law of spiritual empowerment but I may not have the time to talk about it is the reason why I spoke to you about men.
I have tried to obtain things in my life through the years that proved very difficult. And every time I prayed, God spoke to me as if I already had them. But then I met certain men. And I was amazed at how easy my life became. I remember years ago, I had the privilege of meeting a man who would later become a general in the army. This man's heart was so connected to me like Jonathan and David. There was nothing I wanted that this man would not take as a case over his head. I remember one time my passport expired and then I wanted to renew it. He wore his army uniform, carried his entire, um, yes, and entered the passport office. People said he's a general son. I just looked at them. I said, I know a man. No. I know God, but I know men. That's why you need favor with God and favor with men. You can have favor with God alone. You will grow spiritually. You will have visions. You will know him. But you will suffer on earth. Because the favor that works on earth is favor with men. Listen. Listen. Please listen. Jesus grew in wisdom, statue of favor with God and men. That was why he could ask that a man's donkey be brought to him. Are we together? I remember that time and I watched with shock. The man entered everywhere. You know how these uh, precious military people just walked in and all the access. And um, within minutes, I was done. I said, ah, God, keep this kind of people around my life. You do ministry like this, why will you be sad? I mean, when there are all kinds of men around, please, your prayer should be, Lord, who are you lifting? Help me to help hold that person while he's rising. Because when you contribute to a man's lifting, he will never forget you. You can change the future, but you can't change history. What has happened has happened. Some of you today, a few years from now, when God would have honored you, you will come back and meet pastor. And buy him one car and buy his wife a car and say, Pastor, you may not remember me, but last year by this time, I, I strolled my way as though going to fall on top of a bridge to enter your church to sit at the back because life could not answer. But it was based on your platform that I rose. And I have vowed that every time God leaves me, you must eat of it. There are people who have covenanted their success to others. Those kind of people, the only thing that will go wrong in their life is hellfire. But as far as earth is concerned, God has settled them. There are men who have vowed that every estate they build, your house must be there because it was through your platform you lifted them. There's nothing the devil can do about it. These are the systems of the kingdom. Which man did you ignore in your life? When God wants to anoint you, he doesn't anoint you through a jar of oil. A jar of oil does not carry the anointing. A jar of oil only carries oil. The anointing is resident with men. Oil has never anointed anybody. A horn has never anointed anybody. A horn comes from a ram. The anointing comes from God through men. If a man does not touch that horn, you can pour everything you want to pour and nothing will change in your life. Please listen to me. I apologize, I've taken a few minutes, but we cannot waste this atmosphere. We're about to pray. It says, but my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, the law of spiritual empowerment. That the grace upon your life is what controls what comes around. I can know what is on you by what I see around you. I can know what is upon your life by the testimonies that recycle around you. 
I can know the level of grace you carry by the possibilities that your life commands. If it is not there, it is not there. Are we together? Yes. That it is true that God anoints men. It is true that God lifts men. It is true that God helps men. He gives power to the faint. And those who have no mighty increased strength. He does that by putting something upon your life that will cause a generation to come at a standstill. Our generation is too busy to be called together by common things. It will take the bush burning to attract Moses. There has to be more than science. There has to be more than philosophy. If it is by the finger of God, then it can call the attention of creation. Listen to me. God brought us to this conference to put something afresh again that will lift you to a dimension. I have seen the power and the excellency of spiritual empowerment bring for me a weak person with no door opening and let that person have the privilege of obtaining genuine grace from a man. And I show you a sign and a wonder. It is not difficult. It is only the grace on you that makes it so. Every mountain is relative to the anointing that confronts it. There are anointings that can trivialize what looks like a mountain. A mountain is relative. Please hear me, people of God. I share the burden of your pastor to tell you I know he put this conference because it looks like the economy is challenging. It looks like a lot of things are happening. But there is enough grace. How God anointed Jesus. Not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power, then he went about doing good. It takes more than a good heart to do good. It takes the anointing. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. Mm. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, spirit to take over, holy fire burn upon my altar, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon my altar. We're about to pray. Something will come upon your life that will reward your sacrifice in this conference. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Many years ago, I had the privilege of meeting a man of God. I was researching about God's generals, Pastor. I wanted to know who had met with the generals that was alive and had put in his heart to study them. Because the day I took God's generals to read, it was as if I was reading about my relatives. Something in me could not leave that book. It was as if a baton was looking for me. And then when I heard that that man had met a number of the generals and those they had met, I went to go and meet him and I said, please, I came. I want you to talk to me. What did the general say? And I remember him saying, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumrall, he said, do not die with this anointing. That every time you are old, find young men. Find people empowered with the spirit. Transfer these possibilities to them. I said, that's it. That's it. I have come to connect to that lineage because there is a generation in need of this pattern. We cannot talk about the things that happen as history and stop there. Man, can
carrying the anointing of the spirit i remember that day i started having encounters after that time now, my life has been full of encounters i'm sorry i'm talking about myself it's not any means to be arrogant at all i just want to as we pray to just share this with you and i remember one of the nights i met this interesting personality after we finished talking was like an impartation happened and he turned and began to go and i asked him i said sir you did not tell me your name and then he walked a while and turned to me and said paul and he turned and continued moving the very apostle that wrote two thirds of the new testament and the spirit of revelation came upon me in a strange way the eyes that see and the ears that hear let me tell you, mantles are real, unctions are real, graces are real. If you have not captured them in your life, you will think people are lying. The possibilities in our lives are not governed just by our desires. They are governed by the graces that we can host. God is able to make all grace because there are many. It's not only one. So we are going to pray. There are people here who desire certain graces. I can share with you stories upon stories upon stories are the product of many anointings. Many anointings. Many anointings. I went a few years ago, Pastor. The Lord gave me an instruction to go and meet God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And I went down, carried a seed, and went down to Canaan land and, you know, to sow an honor. And when I was done, I came out and the Holy Spirit asked me to place my hand on the ground right there. And I placed my hand on the ground there. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Please hear me. If you see men in the flesh, you will never receive anything. If you can see me as I'm taking if you discern that i am not just a person elijah was saying i'm a system embodied in a person men are not just men they are continuity of a program don't mind the bodies look at the agenda through men let me tell you sincerely many of the people you see are carrying what is older than them is ancient the bodies are the only ones who are modern and if you sustain the eyes to see, our generation has lost the honor of reception. This is why very few people are anointed. It's not God's desire to have just a few people. No, borrow not a few. He wants many vessels. But the reason why the vessels are small is because we see men in the flesh. We are going to pray. When God wants to lift you, he brings a man. My life is a product of many great. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.